On today's Glory Day show, the Pittsburgh Penguins are just one win away from winning their second consecutive Stanley Cup, but they will need to fight off the Nashville Predators, who play very well in their building. Mark Hogan will join us to talk about Sunday's Game 6 and the possibility of a Game 7 next week. The Houston Astros have the best record in baseball, and after the first two months, the only person who thought that would happen is going to join us today. Uh, Trey Looney will update us on what's going on down in Houston. It's Houston. Houston. We'll also talk about the NBA, uh, NBA Finals, the Jets, and even squeezing some Olympics talk. Yeah, I thought it would be interesting. I'm, I can't wait. <laughs> of course, uh, we could just put you under oath and ask you to swear loyalty to me. But the best hour of your sports week is coming up right now on Glory Days. Eat radio. Hello again, everybody. Today is Saturday, June 10th, 2017, and you are watching the Glory Day Show with Bruce Disco. My name is Paul Discofani, and this is my good friend, Bruce Oler, uh, Anthony Mazzallo, and Bonnie Schultz are behind the glass, and you are joining us on the NRAVIO TV network, where we stream live from Studio C, right here in the great state of New York. Good morning. It's going to be a hot day today, man, and yeah. hot tomorrow. Finally, Thank goodness. Right? Finally, right? Yeah, that's right. We haven't had a, we haven't had anything that like resembled spring at all. We go right like the summer is what it sounds yeah, like. This has kind of been like March weather the whole year. Yeah, I mean the, the, the rain, the cold. You know, it's been horrible. It really it's has been just been. terrible. Yeah. I, you know, I don't know what to do anymore. You know, we talk about uh, you know spring and uh, getting ready for summer and all that stuff, and we just haven't had that. Nice weather. And then, of course, this weekend it's going to be 90. You know, it's all about global warming, my friend. You know, and it's probably because we got out of that uh, accord. I don't know, the Paris Accord. <laughs> did, you, uh, did you watch any of the testimony? I, I, I did. I, a little bit of it. I, I didn't see all that much of it, you know. Um, and I know you, you posted something. And, of, of course, you know, I think people... You know, I'm not political in, at all. People, I know. People go in... I will build a great, great wall. <laughs> People go in there with it. And I will have Mexico pay for that wall. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll see about that, I guess. We'll see about a lot of things. You know, uh, the thing that bothered me is, of course, now, we're not the liberal media. No, of course and not. And we certainly don't, well, I guess we do do a lot of fake news. But we don't really do fake news. We do strange news sometimes <laughs> here. But, you know, as I was watching that testimony, and I just kept thinking about all the things that they're going to completely ignore yeah. tomorrow in the paper. Okay. So did uh, that happen? Was it a self-fulfilling prophecy for you? Uh, yeah, well, because to me, the most damning statement that he made, yeah. and it's not about the fact that he thought, remember, this is his thought. That's right, that's right. He so thought President Clinton, uh, President Clinton, oh my God, talk <laughs> about fake news, right? He thought uh, Trump was lying to him, mm -hmm. and he thought that he couldn't be trusted. Yeah, it's right? an opinion, you know. But that's and I, and opinion. I, and the thing that brought, got me about that, though, is saying, oh, he's a liar. And all I can think of is, if you want to keep your health plan, you can, <laughs> okay? If you want to keep your doctor, you can. Yeah. You know, I did not have sex with that woman, yeah, okay, and, uh, and no new taxes, okay, right. so it goes both ways. And, yeah, uh, and also, you know, oh yeah, no, Benghazi was caused by a, a video. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'll tell you who I felt bad about, though, and I'm not sure what's going on with this guy. John McCain, what, what the hell questions was he asking? John man? McCain, I think, was either drunk <laughs> or... Uh, he, he was, was asking questions. Check, check his papers, man. You know? <laughs> check his urine yeah. is what they should check. But the thing that got me was, and, and the most telling thing of the entire testimony, 
was what he said about Loretta Lynch. Yeah. Okay. Now, it wasn't the fact that Loretta Lynch went to him and said, don't use the word investigation. Mm -hmm. Call it a matter. Okay? The, the telling thing was that that's what he did. Okay? He said he didn't think it was a good idea, but he did it anyway. Yeah. So he... For the Obama administration, He's a lap dog, is what he, he said. He said, lied. Yeah. He did a lapdog. But when President Clinton said to him, am I under investigation? President Clinton. <laughs> Come on, Disco. I'm just going to keep saying it. <laughs> it's like uh, Woody Allen calling the guy Max. In the, the, the guy Max called yep. Woody Allen Max in the movie. Anyway, um, so uh, it's like Trump said to him, you know, am I under investigation? He says, no. So Trump said to him, well, can you just go out and just tell everybody that because they don't believe me. Yeah. But, you know, you'll clear up a lot of things. And he never did that. So he was willing to lie for the Obama administration and not willing to tell the truth for Donald Trump's administration. You know, to me, that's why you got fired. Yeah. And, and for him to sit there and say, oh, well, I was afraid of him and I was just, you're the FBI yeah. director. Yeah. You're the director of the FBI. You're this guy here. I think the best comment I saw, because the thing that bothers me about this whole thing is pledge and loyalty. Okay, you know, it, you know, if if you're a if you're the CEO, uh, CEO of a company, okay, you have internal audit, okay, and they don't report to you, okay, they have an obligation to basically make sure that everything is on the up and up, okay, right. and it's kind of the same thing with the FBI and the president. You mm -hmm. know, you you can't be asking somebody to pledge loyalty, but. But what Paul Ryan, it was, I think it was Paul Ryan, said basically, you know, this guy is new in the job. He doesn't understand the nuances and things like that. You're not making a big deal about it. I don't but, know. but you know what? They, they make it sound like uh, Donald Trump was asking him to, to, you know, basically say, whatever I say, swear yeah. yes yeah. to. Yeah. That's not what he was asking. He just wants to know that he's going to be loyal to him. Mm -hmm. and, and loyalty doesn't mean lying for him. No, that's right. Loyalty just means not leaking information to somebody else about something that you might have and said. And it turns out he's that's the guy that leaked it, right? And that's why he got fired. He's out. He's, he's out. Because he wasn't. He, he was, uh, you know, he never asked him to lie. I mean, this is what I don't understand about the press today. And the, um, the Daily News had eight, dedicated the first eight pages of their newspaper on uh, Friday, mm -hmm. right, to this whole thing. They didn't even mention the Loretta Lynch of course thing. Not. Now, it's, again, I'm not saying that uh, what she did was wrong. It's her job. Yeah. What he did was wrong. You know? And I don't think, that, and, the, and the president never said, I want you to make this thing with Michael Flynn go away. He just says, I hope. Yeah, yeah. Right? That's right. Because. They were all. They were talking about him just before he said that. You know, every, every, I read the transcript. Okay, and Comey said after they left because he he asked Sessions and Pence to leave the room. He says, "I want to talk about uh, Flynn." Mm -hmm. Right, and he says, "You know, uh, he's a war hero. He's this. He's that. He's having a really tough time. He had to resign." I don't think he did anything wrong by talking to. Russia, I think what he did, what his mistake was that he didn't tell the oh, vice yeah. president. Oh, that's right. That's right. He said, so I just hope you could see your way mm -hmm. to, you know, he never used the word letting this go. He never. <sighs> well, let's change the subject then. The Mets. Did you watch that game last night? I can't tell you how much I hate this team. Anymore. Yeah. Well, you know, you talked last week, I think, about the fact that it's a lost season. Stop putting your thumb up in it, there. It's a lost season. And, it, and, and the Yankees, I'll tell you, man, they are, they are really players in great baseball. I mean, they but, lost, when the Yankees lost night, that game, by the way, when the Yankees lost that first game to, to Boston, Boston, I said, oh, here we go. Here it comes. This yeah. is it. They're going downhill from here. Yeah, this really. is just misery loves company. Mm -hmm. No, of course not. They win the next. Now they won three in a row. Yeah. I yeah. hate them. But so last night, the, you know, there's a couple of things that bother me about the Mets. First of all, none of these starting pitchers can get past five innings most, most nights. That you know? is ridiculous. I mean, I thought about Matt Harvey. Oh, he had a great... He, he barely innings. got through five innings. Five innings, 100 pitches. Why the heck is, is it that? I mean, you know, the Mets, 
They are dead last in Major League Baseball ERA with 498. Mm -hmm. Their starters are 27th with 5.07. The relief is 484. That's 26th. And last night's loss, Dansby Swanson, he hustles a single. And did you see that ball? It was up the middle, man. He, he gets a second base because Curtis Granderson can't takes a circuitous route to, to get to the ball. You know what? Uh, and why is Curtis Granderson in there? Why isn't Juan Lagares that, uh, there? That's the next thing. Why isn't Juan Lagares there? And, again, uh, you're, it's a tie game in the bottom of the ninth inning. Okay, you've got the leadoff guy is on second. Any reason why the next batter isn't intentionally walked, yeah. no matter who he is? Yeah. If it's the pitcher, I don't care who he is. Yeah. You walk that guy because you need to set up the double play. And if you're setting up the double play, then you're going to have your shortstop and your second baseman. Forget about the stupid shift. Yeah. yeah. Right? You're doing a shift, and you're leaving, the, you're leaving the left side of your infield wide open, and your pitcher is throwing it away yeah. to a left-handed batter. Yeah. Where do you think he's going to hit it if he hits it? I don't watch uh, the uh, post game most nights, but I said, you know, it was a troubling loss for me. I said, I wonder how, you know, because, you know, Terry Collins is always sprinkling the fairy dust about how uh, I'm really behind these guys. He looked like a beaten guy last night, man. You know, he didn't have one good answer. And, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if he gets fired this week. Well, I'm really surprised he's not fired already, man. I'll tell you what, they, they, they're playing a doubleheader today. Yeah. Which. We know as Met fans, they don't do well in doubleheaders yeah. ever in their entire history. They're not a good team when it comes to a doubleheader. Um, so, and then they immediately begin uh, a three-game series. Oh, they got Chicago and Washington. Chicago, <laughs> then yeah. Washington, then they go to the West Coast uh, for the Dodgers and, the Giants, and Arizona, yeah. and then the Giants, right? So, uh, it's, it's not going to be pretty. I don't no. think... If he, uh, I don't even think he survives this road trip if they get swept. Yeah. If they get swept, you got to make sure. And here's my question, okay? I know that uh, everybody's talking about Ahmad uh, Amin Rosario. Yeah. Right? Okay. The shortstop? The shortstop. Just take a look at what this kid in Houston did last night. This Houston shortstop, what he did last night. Houston shortstop? Or I mean, Atlanta, Atlanta shortstop. Atlanta, I'm reading Houston. Let's talk about this. Swanson. Atlanta shortstop, Swanson, 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 right? Yeah. Okay, granted, the kid's a number one pick, understand. Uh, he made a great play. He made three in great the field, plays. He right? made three great plays. Right. Knocked so, in the first two runs with a double. Mm -hmm. Scores the winning run on a hustle. Right. He's, he hustled out of the box. That's what we're talking about here. We're talking about an infusion of Enthusiasm. hungry, enthusiastic players. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Exuberance. Just waiting for uh, <laughs> <laughs> youthful exuberance. <laughs> Just waiting for um, Cespedes to get back, or waiting for Mats and Lugo to get back. No. Yeah. Yeah. You need to infuse this team. The Mets team. are dead on arrival right now, man. Yeah. And it's not gonna. It's not gonna be a pretty season for them. No. And and you know what? Uh, the pitching isn't getting any better. You know, you could talk all about, and, and I think that Terry Collins has completely mismanaged the bullpen. I really do. Yeah. I, 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 I completely agree with that. But you can't get your starters past the fifth inning. Why and, is that? Because Warthen has to Terry go Collins too. Is that Collins' fault, though? No. His, this is a pitching coach. Yeah, exactly said. right. He He's should be gone. Go. Dan Warthen should be gone, too. You know, I, I just don't understand how you could have the same group of pitchers, the same pitching, uh, same basic pitching staff, and have completely different results. What's the difference? What happened between 2015 and today? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I know, obviously, uh, Harvey had the injuries. Yeah. You know, Harvey had the thoracic. Well, you know, we don't know if Syndergaard's coming back this year. We, we don't, don't know, know if uh, Familia will be back this year, you know. I mean, granted. It's, it's sad. You know, we talked about, um, you know, we talked about they lost their top offensive player, their top starting pitcher, and their top reliever, and that all three of those players were probably in the top five. Yeah, but players. they're not missing Cespedes. They really are not. I don't think they are. If you look, if you look at what uh, uh, Conforto has done, yeah. Jay Bruce is leading the team. He's got 15 home runs. Right. I mean, you know, they are not missing Jonas Cespedes. And I don't like that guy anyway. I think he's a hot dog. I really do. I like that guy. I I hate him. That guy. I tell you, I'm going right on record right now. I hate that guy. I hope. I hope they get rid of him, man. I'll tell you that. Even though he signed a big deal, you know. No. 
Yeah. We need that guy in we the We don't lineup. need him. He's a hot dog. Yeah, we need that he guy. He gets hurt. You know, well, he does he, get hurt. That's the problem. He, he, he gets hurt. He doesn't hustle. You know, he hustles when he wants to. He he's he's not a team player. The guy. Well, he's a what? me 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 guy. Now he's got now he's got that big contract, which yeah. is what they were afraid right. to give him that contract. He's a hot dog. He's a has been. But here's what they need to do. Need to bring up Rosario. Yeah. They need to cut Jose Reyes. They need to uh, maybe move Cabrera to third. Yeah. Let Flores play third, maybe. Dude is finally heating up. Uh, and they need to just have their outfield real simple. Cespedes, Conforto in center, and Jay Bruce. Bruce. That's it. That's what they need. But you know what? I don't know what to do with the pitching. Because you know what? They're not going anywhere yeah. without pitching. Well, you know, you look at, we talked about this, I think, at least a few more, a few times over the past year. You know, the, the Cubs, they did it a whole different way. The Cubs said, you know, we're going to load up on, on uh, everyday players. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we'll find some pitches. You know what I mean? And, 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 you know, guys that are experienced will find a way to win. You know, most of these Met guys, uh, most of the Met pitchers, I mean, they have this great, you know, potential. But you know what? They're not getting it done. They they're really not getting. Not. You know what it is? They're it, they're getting it done in in little short spurts. They should, what they should be doing is sending Matt Harvey down to the minors. Now I know he pitched well last night, but if all you could do is throw five innings, I don't need you at the major league. But, well, it's not the five innings. It's like every every inning is, is he's throwing twenty pitches, man. Yeah, because he's in trouble every yeah. inning. You know the reason why he got out of trouble yesterday so many times was because it's the Atlanta Braves. Mm. You think that's going to happen against the Cubs on Tuesday oh, when not. he pitches again? Yeah. Or it's going to happen against the, the uh, on Saturday yeah. against the Nationals? No, they're looking at uh, 12, 14 losses in a row here. And Terry Collins will be the full guy. And, you He's got to be. And probably rightfully so, too. You know what? That, and that, and that should be a show in itself as to who the new manager would be. Because it's not going to be Wally back. Well, well, no, you, 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 you know your friend, you know, what are your favorite guy bets oh. that we like to talk about? Lenny Dykstra. Lenny you know Dykstra. who he said the manager should be? Who? Oh. Howard Johnson is what yeah. he said, you know. That's a guy <laughs> who should be having his urine tested every day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. it's a tough year to be a Mets fan. Oh, you know? it is. All right, you know what? Shall we keep with the baseball talk? Yeah, why not? All right. We take a break here, and when we get back... We'll hear from Trey Looney, and he'll give, up, he'll give us an update on the complete opposite of the Mets, the Houston Astros. Best team in baseball. Stay with us. You're watching the Gloria Day Show, Bruce Disco, only on the Enradio TV network. We're coming right back. This is Chris Lusdick, and if InRavio.com spots you at an event wearing this bracelet, they will give you $100. For over 60 years, Hanson Carpet has put the customer first, providing only the finest quality products and service. And Hanson Carpet is so much more than just carpet. We also carry a wide selection of window blinds and shades, and our licensed and insured technicians can service any of your flooring or window covering needs. Browse our huge selection of laminate, carpet, linoleum, vinyl, and tile. Stop by our showroom today or visit HansonCarpet.com. No matter what your project, Hanson Carpet has got you covered. Shop of Master, 1-800-HEY-DUDE, your full service store with personalized attention, school band instrument rentals and sales, music instruction on all instruments for all styles and age groups, for guitars, drums, amplifiers, PA systems and accessories, it's Village Music Shop, 1495 Montauk Highway in Master. call 1-800-HEY-DUDE or go to villagemusicshop.com.
Welcome back to the Glory Day Show with Bruce Disco here on the N Radio TV Network. In 2016, the Houston Astros began the year as one of the favorites to get to the World Series and instead had a miserable season finishing 84, 84 and 78, 11 games behind the first place Texas Rangers and five games out of the wild card. But this year has been a different story. They have the most wins in all of baseball with 43 and they've only lost 18 games. They've scored the most runs, hit the home run, hit the most home runs and they have the best batting average. They're second in ERA behind the Dodgers and their pitching staff has the most strikeouts. On our phone is one of the few people who knew all along that this was going to happen. Please welcome back to the program, Trey Looney. Trey, how are you? Hey, I'm doing great, Bruce and Disco. Great to hear y'all. Yeah. Are How's you it drinking going? a Kool-Aid or what, man? <laughs> they look like a great team this hey, year. They really are. It, it has been a really great ride. Um, it, it's, it's very, very uh, interesting to see a bump, bunch of people jump on the bandwagon. Well, it's a pretty easy bandwagon to get to. That's a <laughs> hey, look, you know what? It, it, they're an exciting team to watch, uh, and and that's really, I mean, w when you talk about controlling the plate, and 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 you know, they they do that better than any team right now. They're they're hitting home runs on on mistakes, and they're striking people out, and that is exciting baseball. You know they, uh, you know they had a, a down year last year, but they still. You know, after the All-Star break, they were great after the All-Star break. They just dug themselves such a hole they couldn't get out of it last year. Well, th that primarily was due to uh, how the Rangers really dominated us last year. And, uh, you know, I think if you look at it, if, if we had split with the Rangers, we would have been in the thick of it for the wild card. And I think that that was really kind of a, a point of uh, contention for, for the Astros and, and why you, you saw them. Uh, play the Rangers which, uh, with such vigor this last week and, and sweep them up there in, in Arlington. You know, they have, a, they have like a pretty good mix of uh, young kids and, and, you know, they brought back... They got two Yankees on that team, too, yeah. man. Two ex-Yankees, you know, who are playing pretty good ball, too, right? You oh, know. yeah. I, you know, McCann has really settled down the, uh, the, the pitching staff. And uh, Beltran, um, you know, obviously he still has a few folks down here that they call him a, a traitor, yeah. uh, as I mentioned before. But he's starting to win some folks over. Uh, instead of traitor, they're calling him Trey Toe. So he's taking <laughs> the arm. You know, you know he, uh, uh, you know, when he was with the Yankees, uh, I thought he was done. And now he goes back to Houston. He's reborn. I guess he's a Hall of Famer. Is he going to be in the, make the Hall of Fame calls Beltran? It's, I think it's close, you know, we'll, we'll, have, we'll have to see, you know, and uh, at least I don't think everybody's talking about him using the juice or anything like that, which will probably play to his advantage. Do you think he, if he goes to the Hall of Fame, what hat does he wear? Uh, ah. You know, that's a good question. Yeah, you that know, is. It, 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 that would probably depend upon what he does down here. You know, I mean, and, he had, uh, he had I, a great, I think that, no, go ahead. You know, he's he's probably on the bubble or a little bit above the bubble when it comes to the Hall. Uh, but if he is able to help this team uh, get to the World Series, win a World Series, uh, and and be an integral part of it, which which it certainly looks like he is so far this season, I would really uh, I would really think that his chances would bode well. So. Well, you know, he he had his you know he had success, obviously a lot of success with Houston. Uh, he had a lot of success with the Mets, except for one at bat. Right, right, that, and that's what they'll never forget. Met fans, most Met fans, will never forgive him for that for taking I'm, that ball third strike. Still, I'll, I'll never forgive him, but that doesn't take away that he was a great player. I just can't stand his face. Um, but and then with the Yankees, he had success. So that's a tough call. All right, so Trey, what uh, you know, what is the biggest difference you think this year? I mean, besides the fact that they're better. You know, what is it? Well, what? It's basically the same team, isn't it? It, it is, but, you know, it's not. Um, you know, adding Aoki, Beltran, uh, McCann, and, uh, and Reddick has added some veteran depth, and uh, Hinch has turned in probably 50 different lineup cards so far this year. Uh, you've seen uh, guys like Marwan Gonzalez. He's stepped up. Um, Springer has certainly elevated his game. You know, Altuve is not even hitting, you know, what he normally does, uh, except for on the road, and he's crushing it on the road. And, you know, the road record, I think, was also another one of those things, and I think that kind of comes back to 
the circle the wagon mentality that Hinch has, has put in place. Uh, getting those veteran guys in there and being able to rotate these guys and keeping them fresh, I think, is also key. And, you know, they've done all this despite having four uh, pitchers on the DL with uh, with Puchel, Morton, uh, McHugh, and, uh, and uh, recently uh, the other guy, uh, Musgrove. So now we're talking about uh, we're a third of the way into the season now, just about. Yeah. And uh, do they keep this up, do you think? Uh, you know what? The, the way that this team has is, is been created and what they've done to, to get the wins thus, thus, thus far, they're going to need help in the bullpen. And I know that they've got a really solid bullpen, but they have pitched a lot of innings. And to me, that that's, that's the, the one area that, that would be huge. Now, I would also argue they need a, another starting pitcher, which I would not be surprised for them to, uh, to trade for a guy like Garrett Cole or Hellickson, uh, you know, some quality arms that can give you some real innings in, in the playoffs or postseason. Well, that's uh, the, uh... But I think that they're, they're going to probably struggle a little bit, um, to be honest. And, and you know, I, I, I would love for them to, to challenge for the, the best record ever. Um, and, and that would certainly be a special season. Uh, but as a longtime Astros fan, I'd much rather see them be ready and have the ability to attack this postseason um, with your best foot forward. Well, they definitely don't want to, uh, you know, they want to keep their position as a, uh, as a division winner. Uh, again, they got a 12-game lead right now. Man. Well, <laughs> 12-game lead, you know. Right, right. Well, I don't expect, I mean, even if they go 500 ball, they're probably not going to lose that. And I don't see them doing anything less than that. So it's, it, but, uh, you know, again, they, they lost to the Angels last night. It was the first uh, time in almost two weeks they didn't score five runs. And so, you know, it's, it, they, they've hit 96 home runs on the year. So I, I would imagine for the weekend up, uh, they'll be at 100. And you know, they get contributions. So, I, you know, I'm, it's exciting. You know, now, they have never won a World Series, is that right? They, they came into existence the same year as the Mets, 62. Right. They were the Houston Colt 45s, I think, back right. then, as a matter of fact, right? Mm -hmm. right. And yeah, they had, there was that epic uh, series. The, the year the Mets won in 86, right? I mean, that was an epic series against, uh, against the Houston Astros. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I don't think they've ever had... I don't think they've ever won a, a uh, I'm going to say Stanley Cup. I know they haven't won a Stanley Cup for sure, but they probably haven't won uh, the Major League Baseball uh, trophy either, though, right? No, they have not, and, and they've had some teams that, that could have challenged for it. Um, certainly the team that did play in the series versus uh, the White Sox was, was a really great team. Uh, but, you know, they, they got swept, and that White Sox team was pretty strong at that point in time. So um, I... I this would be a very special season for, for a longtime Astros fan. My first Astros game I ever went to was when I was 10 years old. It was uh, when the Astros were playing the Phillies for the pennant. And I, as loud as the Astrodome was, uh, we sat up in the skybox. It was just an incredible experience, and I've been a fan ever since. Have you? Uh, was that the first time you'd been in that building? Yes. Because I can't imagine how big a building is, a domed stadium for baseball. To a 10-year-old, it, it is immense. <laughs> <laughs> well, at the time, wasn't it the eighth wonder of the world? Yeah, I, I think, think so. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's even a brewery down here called Eighth Wonder. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> not your brewery, huh? Not, brewery. not our brewery, not Bearded Fox. <laughs> okay. How is the Bearded Fox doing? Is that where you're on your way to right now? No, I'm I'm actually going to another appointment with uh with some with some friends and and it's gonna be a fun day. So uh, oh. the, the the wife's away in Austin and and so I get to be bachelor today. Austin, Music <laughs> City, very good, very good. <laughs> All righty, man. So uh, good luck well, the rest of the year. Yes, uh, thanks guys, and thanks for having me back on. Uh, you know, we'll uh, look forward to doing this again, maybe here in a little bit. Uh, you know, I, I know that the, the Mets are struggling, but, you know, hey, um, it's, it's a long season. They play 162, right? Yeah, but, you know, we're, we're, we're in the middle of, uh, we're having a lot of problems here. You know, you were talking about an overworked bullpen. 
Uh, the Mets have only had one starter get more than 21 outs. That's it. Yeah. The whole year. Wow. You know, uh, you know again, yesterday, uh, they kept, uh, you know, Matt Harvey pitched yesterday uh, through five really nice innings, but he was over 100 pitches in five innings. They just can't, uh, you know, two years ago when they, when they went to the World Series, they were the best team in the league as far as issuing walks. You know, and best one team of the, meaning uh, the least amount of walks. The least amount of walks. Okay. Right. You know, and one of the things um, you know you were mentioning before was about uh, length from your starters, and you know right. you, we miss a guy like uh, Bartolo Colon who gave you seven innings every time. Every time out, Bartolo Colon was good for seven. He's having a terrible year this year, by and the way. He's on the DL actually. Yeah, he should be. Right. <laughs> he should be on his way out. You know, you're right, and if, if they're only able to go five innings tops, I mean, you, you're really looking at uh, you know, taxing the, those guys on the on the back end. And if, if you're doing that to, to stay ahead and, and win games, it's one thing, but you have to understand it's going to wear your arms down. So. Yeah, you know, because even, sometimes even if you don't use those guys, you have to get them up in the bullpen just in case. You know, right. and you, you know when you're looking, ah, I don't want to talk about it. It's making me sick. But 44-16 <laughs> is a pretty good place to be right now, Trey. So congratulations on your team. Hopefully you keep up that success. And uh, like I say, we'll have you back um, when we start talking postseason maybe or something. You, know? you got it. All you right. got it, guys. All right. Well, thank you. Great day. Great day. Thanks, right. Trey. And if you're in the... Uh, if you're in the Houston area, I guess you want to go to the Bearded Fox, right? Exactly. But, there you go. <laughs> Even though Trey won't be there, use the name well, Glory Days and get a free drink. <laughs> 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 All right, man. Thanks a lot. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Right. Yep. Your, your bachelor you weekend. Yes. We won't you tell it. your wife, I promise. No, it's all right. She, she already knows. What happens on Glory Days stays on Glory Days. There you go. All right. Thanks, man. All right. All right that's our good pal. Uh, Trey Looney. Trey so Looney. we're going to take another break here on the Glory Days show. When we get back, we'll talk to Mr. Pittsburgh, Mark Hogan, about the Stanley Cup Finals. Stay with us. You're watching the Glory Days show with Bruce and Disco, only on the Radio TV network. We're coming right back. What's up, guys? We're Scan on Fair, and we're here with Enravio. If they catch you at a show with one of these bracelets, you will win a hundred bucks. That's a lot of money. So get a bracelet. Do whatever it takes to get that. Hit them up online. <laughs> The world of advertising has changed. Radio, TV, and newspaper revenues have declined drastically. Why? Because businesses have realized that advertising return on investment isn't what it used to be. So what can we do about it? Well, that's easy. Advertise online. Own a local restaurant, real estate agency, or even a national retail chain? Whatever your business, in radio can get your message out there. And we can do it at a fraction of the cost. Call today and see the difference for yourself. This isn't TV. This isn't radio. This is in radio.com. Village Music Shop of Master, 1-800-HEY-DUDE, your full-service store with personalized attention, school band instrument rentals and sales, music instruction on all instruments for all styles and age groups, for guitars, drums, amplifiers, PA systems, and accessories. It's Village Music Shop, 1495 Montauk Highway in Master. Call 1-800-HEY-DUDE or go to villagemusicshop.com. This is Joe Larson. You should check out the 505 on Racing Show live every Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Or catch us on video on demand anytime, 24-7, only on the Enravio TV network. Welcome back to the Glory Day Show with Bruce and Disco here on the Enravio TV Network. The last team to repeat as Stanley Cup champions were the Detroit Red Wings almost 20 years ago. 
Now the defending Stanley Cup champions are on the precipice of their second straight cup as the Stanley Cup will be in Nashville on Sunday night. The Penguins shut out the Predators in Game 5 and put up a sixth spot against my guy, Pecorini, to take a 3-2 lead in the series. On our phone is our hockey correspondent from Ohio, but he grew up in Pittsburgh and he still bleeds yellow and black. If I had a guess, he's got a champagne ready to go for tomorrow. Please welcome back to the program, Mark Hogan. Mark, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you guys? We're doing great. So, you know, my prediction from last week was looking pretty good after Nashville won the two games. And they, they were pretty convincing in those wins. They really were. They are, you know. 5-1 and 4-1. Yeah. Or 4-1 and 5-1. But um, I just think, uh, I, I'm just surprised at how flat they were. I mean, Pittsburgh came out and they blitzkrieged them uh, in, the, uh, in the first period of game five. And, uh, Pecorini they never, didn't they never look good. He gave up two bad goals, two out of the three, and they pulled him. He's got plenty of time to rest now. Yeah. But uh, that was an impressive 6, six nothing win. The, the thing that bothers me, and, and Pete had posted this, is, you know, they still, we still have all these haters about Sidney Crosby, you know? Why can't they? And it's, it's, to me, it's most of my Ranger fan friends that really are, you know, they say he's a crybaby. Me. He's a tough guy, man. You know, maybe he was a maybe he's a crybaby earlier in his career, man. But he's just a great player, man. You know, do you, do you see what he did with uh, Subban? Yeah, he was dribbling his head on the ice. <laughs> he was. He was. <laughs> so, Mark, what do you make of this whole thing? Um, you know, they they at home they're world beaters in Nashville. They look terrible. So, what happens now? Sunday night. Well, Paul, I thought I was going to have to buy you a beer there for a second because uh, that little limb you went out it was looking pretty good yeah. <laughs> uh, after, those, after those two games in Nashville. Uh, look, the teams are winning at home. I mean, and they're winning big at home. And that's scary uh, for Sunday night because I know how uh, Nashville played uh, the last two games uh, at their place. So I don't know what's going to happen on Sunday, to be honest with you. I mean, I think if Pittsburgh plays like they did in Game 5, then it really shouldn't matter whether they're playing in Nashville or they're playing in Pittsburgh. Uh, again, what I like to see uh, was that there was other guys stepping up and, uh, and making those goals. Uh, so it's, it's going to be interesting. I, I still think that's a crazy venue to play in down there in Nashville. And I think they're going to be ready to, to, to play. I, I don't think they're just going to fold up and, and go home. So I'm looking forward to the game. Uh, I'm thankful that uh, Pittsburgh uh, has home ice in Game 7, though. Well, here's, here's something, a uh, couple of things for you to, to be fairly confident about. Number one, Pittsburgh has won all of their Stanley Cups on the road. They've won their four Stanley Cups, all of them on the road. So they don't really want to go home. So that bodes well for them. Yeah. You know, that bode well for them. And the statistic of the day is that when a series is tied at 2-2, the team that wins game five has won the Stanley Cup 17 of 24 times since 1939. So that's about 71%. I'll do the math for you. But um, so uh, it's looking pretty good for Pittsburgh. But the difference, again, uh, you got to look at Pekka Rennie. Rennie? How do you pronounce his last name? Rennie. Rennie. Okay. So Rennie has given up only two goals in Nashville, and he's been pulled twice in Pittsburgh, and has and is stopped just 34 of 45 shots in Pittsburgh. So game seven, uh, you know, is not something that, uh, you know, well, Nashville Peter Laviolette's going to be had to face with a pretty difficult decision then. I mean, if it does go seven games. Well, I tell you what, what are you doing for this game? Well, he's got to play Rini tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, tomorrow. But, tomorrow. But if, but if Rini wins, then it's a no-brainer. Then he plays game seven. But I think he's got a quick hook, though. Yeah. Although he... he did they, uh, they... They yanked him after the first period. Yes. Right? Yeah. Did you... Uh, I, I, I know I was watching the game, and actually, I guess, I guess the last... These last three games are all on Channel 4 because the other games were on, I guess, NBC Sports. But uh, in the uh, first intermission, Charles Barkley visited. Did you, did you see that, Mark? 
I did. I mean, I was amazed. You know, I thought the game was in L.A., man, all those celebrities out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he, uh, he was talking about how, how much great, uh, how much better the um, Stanley Cup playoffs are than the NBA playoffs, you yeah. know? And uh, somebody, you know, I think it was Mike, Mark Mil uh, Milbury was looking at him saying, you know, but don't you work for the NBA? He goes, they got to pay me anyway, is what he said, <laughs> something like that, you know? <laughs> What'd you call him? What'd you say they called him? Charles Barkley? Uh, circumference, you know? Circumference. Because he's yeah, kind of round, man. You know, I, I think he's heading to the fat farmers, but I, th I thought I read something today about that, too. You know? Hey, Mark, so, so I know you think that uh, Pittsburgh's going to win this game on Sunday, but how confident would you be if they lose this game uh, and it goes back to Pittsburgh for a seventh game where both teams have won all their home games? Well, you're right. I hope that they can win on Sunday. Um, I would still remain uh, a little bit more hopeful because, one, we're going back to Pittsburgh and if you look at, you know, the way the home teams are playing, uh, they're, they're, they're really just sort of beating the hell out of the, uh, the other team uh, on their home ice. So that's positive. Uh, look, we have the better team, guys. I, 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 I truly believe that. We have uh, the pedigree. We have the experience. And I, I think that the Penguins know they have to win this Stanley Cup, uh, sort of for their legacy and for the fans. Uh, it'll be a huge disappointment if, if they don't get this done. So knowing all that, uh, you know, I, I like our chances. I'd rather just close it out on Sunday, though. All right, let's, uh, we got a couple minutes left here, right? We got a couple minutes left? Okay. You want, can we switch gears for a second and talk about the NBA Finals? Sure. Okay. Uh, so Golden State has got is won all 15 of their playoff games. Well, up until last night. Up yeah. until last night. And then last night, the game got really nasty. I Did mean, it? It, was, it was leading up to that, but they had, there were seven technical fouls in that game yesterday. To me, the story of that game was, you know how many points the Cleveland Cavaliers scored in the first quarter? Oh, they scored almost 50 points. 49 <laughs> points! That's on a pace of 200 points in a game, man. It was 86 to 68 at yeah. halftime. I mean, I turned it on with about 11 minutes left, and actually, um, Golden State won on kind of a run, so they were down by, I think, either, I think they got as close as 13, but next thing you know, it went back up again. The final was 137 to 116. Mark, you're a basketball fan, right? I, I, we can't really say that we're much basketball fans here. So you've been, you've been watching this. What do you think of the whole thing? Look, guys, even though I'm a Pittsburgh guy, uh, Pittsburgh doesn't have an NBA team, and I follow LeBron and I follow the Cavs. So I've been following this series very closely, and I'll tell you, last night, I, I have never witnessed uh, a better half of basketball than I saw what the Cavs do last night. It was absolutely awesome, and the, the crowd was all jacked up. I, I, I think that they needed it. Look, at the end of the day, Golden State's going to win this series. Everybody knows that, but uh, I, I think, you know, the Cavs didn't want to get swept. They wanted to give their fans at least something and they did that last night so uh it's amazing to see uh you know that type of talent uh, mesh together i agree uh Bruce, it got kind of uh dirty there i don't know why uh you know i think tempers were flaring a little bit uh, well, you know the, uh, was really excited. draymond <laughs> draymond green uh said the other night uh he says i don't pay much attention to anybody in cleveland they don't seem to be the sharpest people. That's what he said. <laughs> well, you know what happened? After game, during game three, his mother got into an altercation yeah. in, the, uh, in the stands. And when security arrived, bodies were flying and stuff. And he said, uh, he said uh, my mom can hold his own. So last <laughs> night, they were, fan they were chanting, uh, Draymond sucks, Draymond sucks. And what happened was he got a technical in the third period. And they thought third quarter, third quarter, All right. and they thought that he had gotten one in the first quarter, but they had actually given it to the coach. I see. Uh, so they were all waving goodbye, <laughs> goodbye, because they thought he was ejecting. Because when you get to second technical, so it really got kind of contentious, you know. Now, and we got to wait till Monday now uh, for the next game. So, uh, and that's in Sacramento. So right. it, it could be all over. I mean, I really. 
as great as, and, and there's no doubt that, that the Golden State Warriors are a great team, you know, mm -hmm. but it's too bad they didn't pull that game off last night because that's, I mean, I'm not sure any team has ever swept all the way through the playoffs. No. In any I was sport, you know? In any sport of any team. I mean, and we're talking about the years when the, um, you know, when there's multiple levels of yeah. playoffs. So we're talking about the last 20, 25 years. I don't think anybody's ever done that. Mark, do you know that? I don't believe anyone has. Yeah. my knowledge. Yeah. Well, nobody's ever come back from down three games to none in the NBA, have they? Not to my knowledge, guys. Yeah, I mean, I that know, would be a very, very difficult task to pull off. I know Toronto did it in the NHL in the 40s. The Islanders did it yeah. uh, in, the, uh, in the 70s. The and Red Sox did it against the Yankees? Red Sox did it against yeah. the Yankees. And there was, another, well, <laughs> yeah. there was another NHL team that did it, too. And I can't think of, the, of who it was. Yeah. But anyway, it was another NHL team that did it. But I don't believe anybody's ever done it in, in basketball. In the NBA. So, so Mark, is, is the, do you think... Is the idea just to make this competitive from here on out? Or are they do they really or do you really think a chance that, you know, all right, granted they won this one. You know, because if they go now into Golden State and they could steal a game there, then they're coming home. And, and they had to feel pretty good. I mean they're gonna game, win that they're gonna win that game six. They, they played a pretty good game three, and actually game two was a good game too, yeah. although they you know, I mean they, the question or the uh, outcome was never in doubt. But they'll win a game six and then in a game seven you never know what's That's gonna right. happen. We will well, see. here's my thoughts, guys. Uh, I think that in order for the Cavs to really have that type of chance, they are going to have to play perfect basketball. They're gonna have to score at minimum, I think, hundred and twenty points a game. Everyone's going to have to be on sort of like uh, they did last night because the Cavs have a little, uh, you know, difficulty playing this thing called defense. So uh, Golden State's a, pr a pretty potent offensive team, and they were just sort of going through the motions last night. I don't think that they were in the game mentally. Last night we saw a really, really, really great Cavs team playing beyond potential, and we saw Golden State not really uh, doing anything other than going through the motions, in my opinion. So I, I think there's always a chance, but, I mean, look, just take one game at a time, and if LeBron's on and they can stay out of foul trouble and they can keep some, uh, uh, some of those Golden State guys at bay, why not? Well, I have to tell you, I haven't watched one second of the NBA playoffs this year. No? I just haven't watched it, uh, but I'll be watching Monday night. I watched the game last Sunday. I watched, it was, I watched it was a, it was a little a, bit of the game last night yeah. um, just because I thought that, you know, I always like to see uh, when a team has a chance to win a championship. See it get awarded the trophy. I like uh, to see them get the trophy. The trophy yeah. but, uh, but I'll be watching on Monday night. All right, Mark, we're out of time. All right, guys, thanks. <laughs> All right, Thank man, you. we'll talk. All right, we're going to take a... Go Penguins. Yeah, go Penguins. Good go. luck. All right, uh, we're going to take another break here on Glory Day Show. Then when we get back, I guess we'll, uh, wrap we'll do up. a little stuff. Well, we got a little more stuff. Okay. And then, we'll, uh, then we'll wrap up for the week. Yeah, I know in the, the okay. tease we said we can talk about the Olympics. I got some Olympic right, news. Can't wait so we'll to get hear to it. that when we get okay. back. Okay, all right. All right, stay with us. You're watching the Glory Day Show with Bruce and Disco only on the Enravio TV network. We're coming right back. Hey, hey, what's set oh, up? Oh, I said I was gonna say what's up for some reason. Hey, hey we're, we're set, set it up, up. and you're watching the Enradio TV network. For over 60 years, Hanson Carpet has put the customer first, providing only the finest quality products and service. And Hanson Carpet is so much more than just carpet. We also carry a wide selection of window blinds and shades, and our licensed and insured technicians can service any of your flooring or window covering needs. Browse our huge selection of laminate, carpet, linoleum, vinyl, and tile. Stop by our showroom today or visit HansonCarpet.com. No matter what your project, Hanson Carpet has got you covered. 
Village Music Shop of Master. 1 800 Hey Dude, your full service store with personalized attention, school band instrument rentals and sales, music instruction on all instruments for all styles and age groups, for guitars, drums, amplifiers, PA systems, and accessories. It's Village Music Shop, 1495 Montauk Highway in Mastic. Call 1 800 Hey Dude or go to villagemusicshop.com. Hey, I'm, I'm Raul Panther. And I'm Commander B. Hawkins. And I'm Mark Well. We're uh, some of the proto men. If we see you without this bracelet, we need to punch in the d But if you have this bracelet from inradio.com, you can win 100 bucks. Put one of these on, or else. Welcome back to the Gloria Day Show with Bruce and Disco here on the Enravio TV network. So we've got a couple minutes before we go. Let's talk about... Uh, You're going to start with the Olympics? I wanted to tell you about the Olympics. Yeah. Okay. Now, the Olympics, the Summer Olympics were in Rio de Janeiro right. last year. Mm -hmm. right? And I saw some pictures that of the... It looks as if uh, it hadn't... Nothing's been touched for like 12 years. There's grass growing everywhere. It's, it's a complete thing. So it's turning out that Olympic venues are becoming more and more a financial disaster yeah. for the host city. You know what I mean? So the 2020 Olympics have already been awarded, the Summer Olympics. They're going to be in Tokyo. Okay. Okay. So there were five host cities uh, that were bidding for the 2024 Summer Olympics, okay? Three of them dropped out. Because? Because they said, you know what? This makes no sense. We're yeah. not going to, it's going to be just way too expensive. So they decided just to drop out. So that leaves just Los Angeles and Paris. So the International Olympic Committee decided that what they're going to do is nobody is bidding for 2028. Wow. Nobody. Nobody wants to host the Olympics in 2028. They should return to Greece. They should well, play it all the time in Greece. Well, well so they what they're going to do is they're most likely going to award Paris 2024, mm -hmm. and then um, Los Angeles will do 2028. 20, and then they'll have to, they're kicking it down the road 2032, I guess, yeah, is what they're doing. We'll be dead by then. Yeah. <laughs> well, will we? Got to do that math. math. That's a long time from now. Well, what, uh, 18 years, 17 years, right? Yeah, how old are you going to be? 50, uh, 15, I'll be 77. You'll be dead. I won't be dead. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be dead. By the way, the, the 2020 Olympics, they're going to be a whole bunch of new sports, but they, they weren't really new sports. They're, like, they're adding different things, like uh, they're going to have uh, mixed relays yeah like men and women doing relays in both swimming and track and field and stuff okay. like that but the interesting thing is they're going to have three on three basketball three on three really yeah okay so uh they're gonna have three on three basketball and they're playing full court no or half, half court? court okay half court 10 minutes or 21 points whichever comes first and uh there's only going to be eight men's teams and eight women's teams and they're working right now on how they're going to qualify the country. So is this in addition to regular basketball? Is it in addition to okay. the five-on-five right. five basketball? Okay. But the, the way that's been done right now is the three-on-three three has been strictly amateur mm -hmm. right now. It's been just, you know, college players and stuff like that. So that's my Olympic report. That's interesting. <laughs> it was. It was. And uh, real quick about the Jets. Yeah. So, now, I know David Harris, uh, <laughs> he, yeah. I guess... He's been, the he line, he's been their middle linebacker for 10 years. Yep. So they released him. They tell Eric uh, Decker, Decker that uh, if they Pack can't trade him, yeah. well, they told him if they can't trade him, they're going to release him too. So that's Harris, Decker, Darrell Rivas, Mangold, Brandon Martian, Calvin Pryor. So who's, good, who's left? Did you say Brandon Marshall or Brandon Martian? No, I thought you said Martian. No, yeah. Brandon. We'll Martian. have to go to the videotape on that one. Okay. Okay. Name me two receivers on the Jets. Uh, a week of Hakuna or whatever his name is. Quincy. Uh, Kuna, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Robbie Anderson, that's right. That's the other guy. Remember Flipper Anderson? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we just going Flipper. But um, so I think that in this year's fantasy draft, we're going to be avoiding the Jets at all costs. Unless yeah. you're taking Chris Hackenberg. Well, yeah. They said threw more passes to the reporters yeah. during the OTAs. Well, you know, may, maybe, I mean, it, it's not shaping up to be a good year for them, but, you know, they could surprise you. Who knows? Um, I wonder about their kicker, though. I don't know. You know, maybe, maybe, maybe their kicker, you know, they're, probably they're not going to score a lot kicker. of touchdowns. No, so they're maybe, not. So, well, so, I don't even know if they're going to get close enough well, to let, kicking. Let, yeah, let, let's hope so. All right, what do we got? We've got some time left. Yep. All right, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take a few minutes of your time. And I want to talk about my new outlet for creative juices. Remember when you used to get to play your song? Yes. At the end of every show? Sure. Okay. So I've been writing a weekly column for the Massapequa Observer. Okay, I've been doing this for a couple weeks now, and since we have some extra time today, uh, would you mind if I share with you my story? For Please this indulge week? me. Okay. <laughs> Uh, it's a stupid column. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of Jerry Seinfeld. It's a show about nothing. Oh, yeah. Does it remind you of brewing out, though, huh? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I've tackled sub su such subjects as, like, vacationing with your kids and vacationing without your kids. Which shore is better, the North Shore or the South Shore? Uh, I've talked about the horror of losing my cell phone and how much I love the Montauk Music Festival. But this week... Uh, Actually, a couple weeks ago, somebody posted something on Facebook that made me think about the subject of time. Time. Okay. It said simply, in a few years, 1990 will be 30 years ago. Okay. So here's what I think. Why does time seem to speed up as you get older? Granted, people my age are on the back nine of life, but why does your lifetime seem to mirror what happens when you get a full tank of gas? Okay. Anyone who drives knows that after filling up your tank, it seems to take a long time to get to that halfway mark. But once you pass that halfway mark, boy, it's all, it's all down downhill from there, right? Um, is that how life works too? How many times have you looked at the calendar and said, it's June already? Weren't we just worrying about snow in February? How did I miss the spring again? I, I think I might still have my winter coat in my closet. But can 1990 be almost 30 years ago? You know the old saying, time flies when you're having fun? But have we had that much fun? You know? Yeah. My wife and I were in our child-rearing years during the 90s, so every day we woke up with our hair on fire, trying to balance work and everyday life while raising two boys. There were baseball games, school concert, family birthdays, vacation. And after our second child was born in 1992, I don't even think I looked at a calendar again until New Year's Eve of the millennium. But as we moved into the 2000s, things started to speed up for me. I remember clear as day when City Field began rising behind Shea Stadium. Every time I went to a game, you could see progress being made. And soon the new stadium would be open and a new era of Mets baseball would begin. But that was in 2009, almost 10 years ago. Does it seem like Shea Stadium has been gone that long? Recently, we've been celebrating anniversaries that seem impossibly long. The Beatles' Sgt. Pepper Lonely Hearts Club Band and the movies Bonnie and Clyde and The Graduate are all 50 years old. Star Wars and Annie Hall and Saturday Night Fever are 40 years old. Elvis Presley died 40 years ago. And Johnny Carson's been gone to the, from The Tonight Show for 25 years. 25 years. South Park is 20 years old. And these are only some of the milestone anniversary. Is there any way to stop this runaway train called time? There are plenty of sayings that we've heard over the years about time, like time marches on, and like sands of the hourglass, so are the days of our lives. <laughs> or as Ed Norton once said, time and tide, wait for no man. But one that sums it all up for me comes from the author Alice Walker, who wrote the book The Color Purple. Time passes slowly, I'm sorry, time moves slowly, but it passes quickly. What does that mean? I don't know, but I like that. <laughs> Our parents tried to warn us about how quickly time passes, but we were young adults with our whole lives in front of us. They told us how swiftly the kids would grow up and how we should enjoy every minute with them because, we, uh, because before you know it, time will pass and they'll be gone to begin their own lives. But we were too busy. Things were happening so fast. In Beautiful Boy, uh, John Lennon wrote, Life is what happens to you while you're busy making other plans. So suddenly... We are the parents who have grown children. 
We took care of them. We guided them through life's milestone. We took plenty of pictures to document their progress in life. But time is the one thing that we can't get back. Time is always moving forward, and it doesn't wait for us to catch up. And if you're not paying attention, you might just miss it. I may have miscalculated how long ago 1990 was, but I wouldn't trade a minute of it. We lived it, and we got through it, and man, it went by in the blink of an eye. And as Abraham Lincoln said, the best thing about the future is that it comes one day at a time. So let's enjoy today, remember the past, and look forward to tomorrow. After all, Dirty Dancing is turning 30 years old. Dirty Dancing, all right. <laughs> So that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. That was very profound. Thank you. All right. <laughs> All righty. Are we out of time? We are. We're wrapping it up. All right. All right. Thanks to our producers, Anthony Mazzallo and Bonnie Schultz, for all their hard work and making us look so good out here. Thanks to Trey Looney for updating us on his first place Houston Astros. And, of course, thanks to Mark Hogan for helping us out with the program today with the Stanley Cup coverage. You also talked and about the NBA the, That's finals. right, the NBA, too. That's right. It's the first time we've talked about the NBA in two years, except when there's a problem. Well, with the Knicks. We always talk about the train wreck the Knicks. Saw. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> thanks again, Chuck and Bonnie, for putting up with this nonsense week after week and allowing us to bring you this type of quality programming. And, of course, thanks to you, our loyal viewers. Don't forget, you can check out the Glory Days On Demand page at www.inradio.com to watch any of our past shows or any of the other great shows on the Inradio TV network. We are not going to have a show next week. I'm going to be at the... Um, You're going to see Hall Tears for Fears in Hall and Oaks. Tears and Hall and Oaks. Yep. Uh, so we'll see you the following Saturday on June 24th. Have a great weekend, everybody. Stay safe, and we will see you next time.